Hi, I'm Robin Walley. Welcome to Lenscraft. Although I currently use a Fuji X-Series camera for my landscape photography, it hasn't always been that way. In the past, I've owned a lot of different full-frame cameras from the likes of Canon, Nikon and Sony, but I've also been a keen Micro Four Thirds photographer. For a while, I even shot landscapes exclusively with Micro Four Thirds cameras from both Panasonic and Olympus before switching to Fuji. Now I've purchased another Micro Four Three camera. This time it's a Panasonic G9 and in today's video I want to explain how and why I use DxO Photo Lab to process my RAW files. One problem you find when you have a lot of RAW files from different cameras is that some RAW converters work better than others. I've yet to find a RAW developer that can do a great job with all my various RAW files. Because of this, I tend to use Lightroom to manage my RAW files and then switch into one of the other RAW converters as I need to. For my Micro Four Thirds RAW files, I like to use DxO Photo Lab. I find that it gives me excellent image quality and provides a lot of flexibility in the way that it handles colours. When you install Photo Lab, you also have the option of installing the Photo Lab plugin to Lightroom. This helps to integrate the two applications and allows me to open RAW files in Photolab, launching it from Lightroom. To do this, select the RAW file in Lightroom that you then want to transfer into Photolab. You can then select the Plugin Extras command under the Lightroom File menu, followed by Transfer to Photolab. This passes the RAW file to Photolab, which can then handle the processing. What you should avoid is right clicking on any of the images in Lightroom and selecting the export to photo lab option. When you export, Lightroom handles the processing of the raw file and then passes the processed image over to photo lab. For the best image quality, I want to use photo lab to handle the raw file processing. In photo lab, it's common to find the software set up to automatically apply one of the presets like the DxO standard one. I don't like to do this and instead have Photolab set to no correction. I prefer to check the effect of each of the adjustments as I apply them, so starting with the no corrections makes sense for me. If you want to check your setup, you can find it in the Photolab preferences. Now whilst I don't like to automatically apply a preset to my RAW files, there are a few options that I always check for each image that I process. The first of these is the distortion correction which is in the Geometry tab in Photolab 4. In the earlier versions of Photolab, you'll need to look through the list of the controls on the right side of the screen to find it. When I turn this on, you can see the correction applied with the DxO module. I personally feel that the DxO module gives a better quality of lens correction than the correction data embedded in the RAW file. My next adjustment is to use a smart lighting feature for more even lighting across the image. When you activate this, there are different intensity levels that you can select in the drop down list. By all means experiment with these as well as the intensity slider, but there's another powerful option you can use. It's the spot weighting tool, which you can use to select areas of interest in the image. Smart lighting then uses this information to produce the best lighting across the image. Select the tool and then use it to click and draw over the important areas of the image. You can also move and resize the spots you draw using the mouse. As you draw each spot, you'll see Photolab adjust the image lighting. Once you're happy, close the tool. The next adjustment I like to apply is DxO Clearview Plus. By default, this has a value of 50 when you activate the control and it's usually far too strong. Instead, move the intensity slider down to zero, then gradually increase it. Low values of around 10 to 20 usually work well when editing landscape photography. After this, I'm going to magnify the image to 100% to see if there's any areas of chromatic aberration that need correcting. If there are, I apply the chromatic aberration option and then check that it's fixed. 
Usually this is enough, but sometimes you may need to use other options as well. The next correction is one of my favourites in Photolab, which is lens sharpening. Often, the default settings are sufficient, but sometimes with an image like this, where there are lots of fine detail, I'll increase the detail slider. Whilst I'm doing this, I'll zoom in to 200% magnification to check the results. Whilst I'm zoomed in to 200% magnification, I'll also check areas of the image like the sky for noise. In this image, I can see that the noise in the clouds is starting to become visible, so I'm going to remove that using noise reduction. Because there isn't much noise in this image though, the standard noise reduction will do a good job. Despite this, I'm going to use the new Deep Prime noise reduction, which seems to be excellent with every image when I've tried it. My final adjustment to the image is the colour. In the colour rendering section, you'll see the image is set to use the default generic rendering category. Below this, there's another drop down with various renderings for the chosen category. If I switch to the DxO portrait rendering, you can see how it changes the colour. Although there isn't much saturation with this rendering, it produces a natural colour that suits this landscape. I can also adjust the intensity of the adjustment to make the effect more or less obvious. There are a lot of other renderings as well that you can explore, but I'm going to save that for another video. At this point, I've applied my basic corrections to this image. This gets me to what I consider to be the starting point for adjustments. With this example, I'll tweak the temp and tint sliders to reduce both slightly. The camera did quite a good job of getting the white balance right, but I want to get a slightly cooler look to the image. I'm also going to increase the vibrancy and to a lesser degree the saturation. The other thing that I want to do is add a little more drama to the sky using a local adjustment. Here, I can apply the graduated filter to select the sky. Then, I can reduce the exposure slightly and increase the contrast. I'll also try a small increase in the clear view setting to see if that helps. Then I can increase the highlights and reduce the midtones to emphasize the contrast in the clouds further. Finally, I'll use the color controls on the selection to increase the vibrancy in the sky. Of course, I can continue to apply as many local adjustments as I need until I have the image looking the way that I want it to, but I'll stop here with this example. If I compare the adjusted image to the starting image, you can see the difference these changes have made. Finally, I'll select to export the image. Although I came from Lightroom at the start, I'm going to export to Photoshop just to show you the image quality. If I zoom to 200% magnification in Photoshop, you can see how clean the sky is, as well as how much detail there is in the trees. And that's why I like to use Photolab to process my Micro Four Three images. The quality is excellent and the colors are great. It's also very quick to check each of the adjustments that I want to apply. If you shoot RAW using a Micro Four Thirds camera, I recommend testing out DxO Photolab for yourself. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, I'll see you soon for another video.